Welcome back to the O Hockey Show. I am once again your esteemed host, Owen Jordan. And you are my viewer. Thank you for joining me today. So, today I saw a report, uh, a report. I saw an article by Bleacher Report where they were talking about five players that are potentially on the move. Five guys that could be traded away, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go over this, and I think some of them were weird picks, and they forgot other guys, so I'm just going to throw my hat in the ring. Uh, there we go. So, let's talk about it. So, of course, the main guy being talked about is, of course, Patrick Kane. So, Patrick Kane is probably the best American player ever born. I mean, I mean, sure, he could be passed up by Austin Matthews, or who knows, like a Zegris one day. But overall, in history, Patrick Kane is, is in my eyes, the best American player ever born. He, I mean, I, he leads American players in points, right? And if you want to talk about the best hands, the best puck mover in the NHL history, it has to be Patrick Kane. I mean, just what this guy can do. He started the revolution of guys like Trevor Zegris and the whole just crazy dangle stuff on your stick, like... He is the originator of this. I mean, when you are an I, when you start a movement in a sport, then you are an icon, and that's what Patrick Kane is. He started the revolution of the crazy dangles that you see on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. That's he started that, and then people took that and went away with it in recent years. But he started it. He's the he's the original. He's the icon. So where does he go? Well, obviously the main talks have been the Rangers, which is where he's from, or at least he's somewhere from New York, and that would be great. It's just there's there's really no way for them to bring him in. I mean, they'd have to give up someone like Panarin, which wouldn't make any sense for them. So Panarin wouldn't make sense, and it, the Ranger it just wouldn't work. They'd have to give up something really big to bring in him, and I don't see how they would do it. And they already, I mean. Of course, I'm sure the Rangers would love to have Patrick Kane. Any team would, but they're, they, it just probably wouldn't really work. Other teams that could really want him, I mean, he would work for any team. He would be the perfect one year left, I think he has one year left, player to add to your team to make you literally the next Stanley Cup champions if you're a contender. It's just I don't know what team could possibly add him without having to give up so much already. Because let's say, let's just give a shot at, like, the Avalanche. They'd have to give up, like, Gerard, which is $5 million in cap space, so they had eight. And I guess, I mean, I guess if the Blackhawks retain salary, then, I don't know. The, I don't really see a, a world where it would really add up for any teams to really bring him in. So, it'd be interesting. I could see him going to really any top team. I just don't know what... I mean, I guess the Blackhawks really are taking anything these days for their stars. They'll just say, like, give us your old Pepsi can and we'll take it, and here's Kane. That's what it seems like they've been doing these days, so I don't know. And along with him is his teammate, Jonathan Tays, the serious captain himself. I don't really know what team would want to add him unless it was, like, the, the Coyotes and they said ship us along with uh, two first-round picks or something. I don't know where Patrick, oh, pa Jonathan Taze would go because I don't know what team would possibly want to bring him in because there's so many. He, he's just, he's not him old his old self, and I don't really know what he would add to a team. And I don't really know. I don't know what a team would want from him, and I don't really know what they'd be willing to give up for him. Like I don't even know if like if they said you can have him for a seventh round pick, I'd be like, okay, he gets paid a lot of money though, and like I don't really know where what I would do with Jonathan Taze. I wouldn't trade for him, but I'm sure there's a team out there that probably would. Maybe the Senators. Who knows? So of and then of course J T Miller, the guy from with 99 points. Somehow I never understand it. When guys lead a team in points and the team's like, okay, well, we got to get rid of this guy. I'm sure there's something I don't, there, I just can't comprehend. But it makes absolutely no sense to me. Why do teams like the Senators and now the Canucks, when there's top players, need to be traded away? It doesn't make any sense to me. Build upon them. I, I don't get it. Like, they tra like the Senators traded Carlson, Hoffman, Stone, Duchesne. Why? 
And now they're gonna now the Canucks are gonna trade away this guy, which I don't understand. But they said they don't feel the need to trade him until the trade deadline. So I don't know. But I think the perfect spot for JT Miller would be on his old team with the Lightning. If the Lightning could trade away, I don't know who it would be, but I feel like Miller and the Lightning, that just seems like the perfect combination. I feel like the Lightning really need one more real solid superstar player who's one of those grindy, work-hard guys, and Miller is that type of person. Any team that wants to be a playoff team, I would go right after JT Miller. He's like, he is a superstar, and he is a grindy, strong player, which is what you need for the playoffs. So if I was any playoff team, I would want him, but I think the, the Lightning are the perfect spot for him. I don't know what they need to give up for him. I mean, I never understand trades. Whenever I think about trades in the NHL, I'm always like, that makes no sense. This team totally got screwed, but for some reason they still did it. So I don't know. But Miller to the Lightning or the Rangers. I feel like either of his last two teams he would work on. I don't know. I mean, even Vegas. I feel like Miller would work on any team that is going to go to the playoffs. He just seems like the perfect playoff player. And I think any team, that he's going to be the big trade deadline pickup, I think. he's gonna. I think he's going to have another good season with the Canucks. He's going to get traded for. And then his team will probably lose in the first round because that's usually what happens, I feel like. But anyways, next up, Pierre Luc Dubois. So this guy, he's re-signed. He was going to be an RFA, but he signs for one year, $6 million. Pierre Luc Dubois, for some reason, doesn't want to be there. I don't understand why. And here we are. Where would he fit? Well, of course, he is French-Canadian. Uh, well, at least I'm assuming by his name. I actually don't really know that. But, you know, Montreal would probably love to bring him in. You know, they love French-Canadian people. Jer Jonathan Turoen, or however you say his name. Just kick this stupid thing. Whoops. Um, so, yeah, du Dubois is... I don't really... He's the type of player that I don't really care that much about. Like, he's, like, kind of a power forward, but kind of a not power forward... I wouldn't, he's not really a type of person I would put on my team because he's not really like, I don't want to say special, but I don't know where he could possibly end up because I feel like he would be a, you know, I feel like he would be a really strong contender on like the Blues. That would be a good spot. Dubois and the Blues would work in my eyes. Um, I guess also the Canadians, if they really wanted to boost their center, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, the Bruins, too. Dubois and the Bruins could work. There we go. Well, whatever. Um, so Dubois and the Bruins, maybe. Um, but yeah, he, he's being talked about. I think he would be a good pickup for a team that needs a strong centerman in their middle lane that they really need it. And I feel like the Bruins were that, but with Krejci and Bergeron and Charlie Coyle, I don't really think they need a pure luck Dubois. I think a team that needs a strong centerman is, pr I would say, the Blues. I think they need, like, a, a, su a center. So the Blues to pick up Dubois. Jacob Chikrin is the one of talk lately that said that he's going to be traded away before training camp starts by the Coyotes. And the asking price is pretty steep. Apparently the the Senators wanted him, but they the request was for two, tr like, two first-round picks, a second and a third, and some prospect. Or, I mean, Zadorov. And I'm like, whoa. That's a lot. So, Chikrin, I always thought, could have been one of the top defensemen in the NHL. He just seemed to be that type of guy that is, like, big, strong, can move the puck, kind of like a, a watered-down Victor Hedman. Like, not as good as him, but he's, like, kind of the same built player, I feel like. But with the Coyotes, he just can't produce anything, and you know what they say. Winners find a way to win. Losers find ways to lose. And Chikrin hasn't been able to do much with the Coyotes, which has really diminished my opinion of him. Because I was, I used to think, like, well, he's good. He just is on a bad team. But it's like, even on bad teams, players rise and shine. And he is not doing anything. So that much would be a super overpayment for Jacob Chikrin. But I think a good team, that a, t a team that really needs a solid defenseman, because he is still good. And maybe he does just need a change of setting, is... I mean, I feel like the Senators are that type of team. I was saying that they need I, the, a defenseman or the uh, Edmonton Oilers. I think they need a solid defenseman in their lineup. 
He's not a puck-moving defenseman, but he is a solid defenseman to add to any team, really. But I think those teams really need a solid, like, stud defenseman, and that's in, that's Jacob Chikrin right there. Also, some honorable mentions, Tyler Bertuzzi is one they said because he's going to be a free agent, and they're all the I don't really understand why. The, the Bleacher Report said Bertuzzi because he hasn't had playoff chances yet, and he might want some, so he might request a trade. Thought that was kind of real speculation there. I don't know why. Maybe I've never heard anything like that. Tarasenko, he requested a trade last year, but it didn't stop him from doing absolutely amazing. Yes, I kind of ripped that off of them it, during the season, leading them in points. So I don't really know why they would trade their top guy away once again, especially after they had a strong season and would have had a pretty good Stanley Cup run if they didn't run into the Avalanche. And then also some guys to think about is Jason Robertson and Ottinger because those two guys need to be signed by the Stars, and the Stars only have so much space that they might need to trade one away in like a Matthew Kachuk situation where they can only sign one and they got to send away the other, which I – whatever. So one of those two guys could be traded to a team. Ottinger I feel like would be a, a strong match with like the Maple Leafs, but once again the Maple Leafs don't have any money to sign people with. So they need. he's a good guy for a team that needs a strong goaltender in net. I don't really know who that is. I've been trying to run that through my head. The only teams I can think about aren't playoff contenders. So I don't really know about him. And Robertson would be absolutely incredible for any team to pick him up. So that's really all I have to say about the five stars that are potentially on the move. Just a little rundown of some names that I saw online. Not really... Not really anything to this. I mean, we already know about Kane and Taze and Miller. I mean, these guys down here, like, whatever. It's just kind of speculation. So, that's really all I have to say. This, once again, please pick up your free subscription below. It's free. Just hit it. If you if you don't like it, just unclick it. Leave a like, not a dislike, and go down below to the comments. To tell me how wrong I am about this list and where do you think these guys could possibly go or if they're going anywhere. Thank you for watching. I've been the Dapperly Dressed Owen. Too sweet and ta-ta for now.